So your power comes back, it's pretty simple up and down controls, there is a light on it. Um, that's to make it much easier to hook up to your truck and not, uh, it also helps with the initial leveling of the camper. When you unhook it, you basically level it with it, and then you set your power jacks, which I'll point out as we go around. Under the cover here is your propane tanks. I'll let you strap down. Remove your cover and you got your propane tanks right here. The best way to, to use these I've found is just leave both tanks on whichever way you have the indicator point and it'll be the tank it'll pull out of. When your indicator right here turns red, that means that tank went empty and it automatically switched to the other one. When you see that happen, you just flip the switch and then you change this tank out with a full one and then watch for it to go the other way. The battery is the interstate battery. There's really not a lot of maintenance to do on that, but that is where your battery is recorded. Right here is a solar plug. If you get a little portable solar, it would help tend the battery. Right here in the front storage compartment, there is, these are magnetic hold opens. This is an override for the power jacks on the opposing side if there'd be a problem. So you can override it. The other handle in here is an override for the power tunnel. This is for the front lights and this is for the LED lights here. Your power, uh, it's pretty simple. They show it's expand and retract. So that's what you do after you level. That will stabilize the camper. They won't lift the camper. They'll just stabilize it and get the bounce out of it. Here at the door, uh, you'll get a set of keys with it. The top, top key will lock the latch. The bottom key is the deadbolt. To, to do the steps, when... Uh, you get where you're, when you're done and leaving, they just simply fold in and latch in and you shut the door on. Uh, however the ground level is, you'd pop your pin here and set the level. If there's a wrong way to do it, your steps would be too high and you'd interfere with the door here. So just make your steps level very, very solid and you'll enjoy the steps. Fold the arm, you just flip it up and fold it in. This is just a heater outlet right here. Right here is hookups to hook up an outside TV, whether you got <coughs> cable or just actually the antenna or if you hook up to satellites. So there would be your power and your antenna feed. This is the uh, water heater. The only time you'd really get behind here to do an inspection is whenever you actually winterize or we use it if we have to service the water heater in any way. Uh, right now it is winterized, everything's dry, but here's the plug for it and here's the caps for the low point drains on the outside of the camper. Your outside kitchen. There is a spray port hose which is located right here at the back that that just quick couples into. A hot point refrigerator. This is strictly an AC powered refrigerator so going down the road it won't keep cold. It would just be a cooler but whenever you get where you're going it is plugged in and you just turn it on and set your settings here. The outside grill pulls out, it's a capital grill. You can see where it folds up and folds out, latch it in. And then you got a quick port here to tap into your LP supply port. Right here is also a rear jack. Again, this just stabilizes the back of the camper and keeps the balance out. Right here at the back in this little panel is actually if you're at a campsite with satellite or cable hookup, that's where you'd hook in. The key TV, I would encourage you to look it up because that is a pretty nice feature. Anywhere there's a TV port, you can run satellite or cable TV and it will recognize what, you, what you're using. The ladder is an access to get to the roof for inspection. It is a walkable roof. Um, it would check for any type of tears, any type of sealant cracks, anything that would be a problem up there for visual inspection. Also, if the slide out would have leaves or anything, it'd be a way to get up there and get that stuff up. The, uh, it is backup camera prepped. It's prepped for the Furion style. Anytime the running lights are on, it would power the camera and send the signal up to the receiver you'd have to put your vehicle. Of course, right here is your spare tire. In the back bumper is where you would store your sewer hose. It does not come with sewer hose. No camper does. But that's where you store it when you use it. Your power cord is quick connect right here. This is removable for storage and travel. Um, it, it simply just twists, kind of twists right in like that and you hook it up. 
right here is that override I was showing you for the, the power jacks in case you'd have a problem you can run them up or down your dumps right here for the black tank and gray tank the black tank is your raw sewage and the gray is what's out of your drains or your sink and your shower these are just gate valves that just shut and that's where you'd hook into your sewer dump Where all your connections would be you just come up through the ground in through here there's a city water connection so if you got a hydrant where you're at that'd be water and pressure or garden hose works for that or if you have to haul your water this is your fresh tank fill so that's where you would fill it the other port here is actually when you're at your dump station you can hook your hose into and it's a spray port inside the black tank so it helped flush out the solids and everything that would build up in your tank this is the main disconnect for when you're not in use. You just simply turn it. If it comes out, it is disconnected. It doesn't do anything if you're plugged up. So that would be while you're in storage, that would that would turn off all the power. Right here underneath is a quick drain. You can see that that's to dump the fresh water tank. So pulled out, that would dump the fresh tank. Shut in, that would shut it off. Uh, outside here I do need to point out behind these four screws it's a number two square to take these off this is where the water pump is located and that's what you would access when you do the winterization or dewinterization so right behind this panel then up underneath the sink on the inside has a similar panel and that's the back side of the water heater where you would hit the bypasses on the water heater for winterization okay we're on the inside of the 253rb in the bedroom uh, there is a light switch here that controls the blue lights there and if you want to reduce the light here on the white it's right there both sides of the bed does have power and usb charge ports there also is room for any type of cpap or anything you'd want to put up here on both sides of the bed as well it is a king bed there is storage up under the bed if you lift it up got all this storage and it is a little pet station you can put water bowl or whatever down there for the pets the window shades you simply lift up or down these uh, strings do adjust the tension if it gets too loose and they go down too easy you can tighten the tension and that will correct that you do have sliding pocket doors and they're latched in place right now right inside the door here is a huge pantry uh, there, the light is manual you switch it on and off as needed lots of storage here at the tv of course it's a Jensen there is remotes uh, there is a whole packet right underneath the sink of all the remotes and things that would come with it your stereo system does have a USP and a, a SDMI port if you want to hook that to your phone and you can play through it through the speaker system on it these do play speakers inside and out through all the settings I encourage you to read up on that right here is your main panel control this controls the retract and extend in the awning and this does bring the slide in or out just by pushing the button here's various lights this controls your lights in your bedroom there these are the blue lights under the bed there and then the main lights here in the main living if the lights don't turn on and off right here there are individual lights and there's several of them around right here on the the panel it shows you the how much the battery is charged, how full the fresh tank is, and the gray and the black tanks. This is kind of a universal. I don't think you got two black tanks or two grays, so one of them's never going to fill up, but when the other one does, that would be the control to show you. This would kick on the water pump if you're hauling fresh water, so that would give you pressure. Of course, if you're on city water, you already got pressure. This is the gas side of the water heater, the electric side of the water heater, and then also if you're in extreme cold weather, you can turn on the tank heaters under here to keep things uh, from freezing or have a problem during real cold cold camping this is a LP slash co2 detector so if there would be a problem this would this would be your detector go off this is a vent for your heat just lots of storage drawers this intake right here underneath the refrigerator is for the furnace so that's the air intake for the furnace your refrigerator is a 12 volt nor cold there, the power button's right here. Uh, you kick it on. That would the, the, this would be the lower setting. One is the warmest. Five is the coldest. You can kick that up and down by setting this setting right here. 
That'd be your upper one, and then this would be your night mode. The night mode is just reduce, reduces the amp draw that the refrigerator would need, and it kicks off after eight hours. So uh, when you're not using the refrigerator, just power it down. Uh, microwaves, pretty well basic microwave to high point, so just set your timings and temp, and that'll get it going. You do have an exhaust fan and a light right at the cook, the cook stove here. The glass fold over here is just for extra countertop. When you're in use, you just fold it up out of the way. You do have a light. Uh, you can see which burner this is. You just simply turn turn it on and hit the spark the igniter and it'll light it right up. The oven is the same as all gas ovens. You do have to get the pilot light lit and heat up a thermocouple. So here you just turn it to the pilot light setting, hold it in, it'll ignite, it'll light right up. Hold your button and then after it stays lit, then just turn it to your temperature and the oven will come right on. When you are in travel, you do need to fold the glass back down. And it kind of snaps in place. Keep in mind all receptacles that have the white tape on is on a GFI. So if you wouldn't have power at one of them, you'd set, check the GFI trip, which is in the bathroom. Your sink, you got hot and cold setting. Hot would be forward and cold to the back. There is a, a spray port that comes out. And these are just again for extra countertop, and this is kind of like a strainer if you're washing, washing dishes. Okay, this this is an extra light, so it does shut off. When you get to the bathroom here, just lots of extra storage over the outside kitchen. Here's the GFI I was telling you about. If it's green, it's all working. If it's not, that's where you'd hit the reset button. You can see you got your power. Toilets and RVs are all pretty well the same. You push it down part ways to put the water in, do your business, all the way down flushes. The shower, uh, the skylight over shower just to give you more headroom. This this has a lot. I'm six foot tall, plenty of room here. So uh, this is a magnetic shut, but during travel, I do encourage using the travel lock. Just more storage here in the bathroom. There is a bit of an exhaust fan here, so if you open that up, you can hit the fan, you got exhaust fan. Make sure your vents are shut while you're in travel or not in use, otherwise it'll leak water. You got on off switch here at the uh, slide out. Your dinette here, uh, if you wish to make a bed, you simply just get your cushions up out of the way. This just folds right up. You fold your bottom, bottom leg up, this just folds right down, sets down, then you use all your cushions here to make, make your bed. Put it back up, just go backwards, fold your legs down, line up your tabs, set it down, and you're back into using the table. You do have a charge port here at the table. storage underneath both sides of these and there's drawers under here to access it again all the blinds are just push up and push down this uh, couch does make it into a nice bed if you need it you just pull your cushions pulls right out fold your legs down you got storage under it for blankets and such you can see it makes a nice big bed Uh, about the last thing would be, oh, you got the uh, this is your fuse panel you just push the top out this has all of your 110 breakers and all your 12 volt fuses uh, if a 12 volt fuse is blown it's pretty nice it does light up a big red light beside it so you don't have any problem which one finding which one went bad on you these are just standard automotive 12 volt push fuses and then the thermostat. The thermostat controls the fan in, in the upper AC, it controls the AC and it controls the heat. This, it shows the current temperature in here and it's pretty chilly out right now. But you just push it, lights it up and it shows it's off. Push it again, we can run the fan on low, fan on high. 
we can set the air conditioner you just set the temperature right here uh you cool high or low an automatic that kicks the fans in and out as you go and then you can switch the heat again you can set the heat up or down and then you can shut it back off works pretty simple here on the ceiling here is a standard smoke detector it has a nine volt battery that's pretty well the adjust of how everything works you got any questions give us a call